Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy if you're new here and I've chosen to live an alternative lifestyle in an off-grid caravan. I've spent most of my time living in this caravan stationary on a private piece of land working as a caretaker for an elderly lady and while I was actually living on that land I was slowly investing money into my caravan to totally refurbish it, get it road ready so I can actually live a nomadic lifestyle. So this year, as of 2024, the caravan is road ready. I've rebuilt the chassis, rebuilt the interior of the caravan and invested in an off-grid system so I can live basically anywhere off the grid in my little house. And I live in here with my two dogs and also two chickens. Yes, it's a bit strange, but the chickens have come along for the journey and they're so far doing really well. And for the past decade, I've also operated my own portrait photography business here. And that's how I generate all of my income. However, if I want to start living a nomadic lifestyle, living wherever I want, whenever I want, traveling all of Australia and sharing this beautiful country with you guys, I need to earn some money to be able to put fuel in my vehicle so that I can tow the caravan around the country. And as soon as I leave Southeast Queensland, my way of earning money, which is operating my photography business, won't really be possible because obviously I need to be present to conduct photo shoots here where people know who I am. In this episode, I wanted to be really transparent with you guys and talk about my income strategy for my new nomadic lifestyle that I'm trying to achieve because I find there's so many people across the internet on all platforms who are sharing their van life but aren't necessarily being super transparent about how they afford to put fuel in their car or pay for site fees. Just cover the cost of living while you are traveling on the road. So something I've decided to do is actually offer my photography service under a subscription system. So each year during the months I plan to return to Southeast Queensland, it encourages people to book in advance. So I'm guaranteed work when I do come back to the area, but also people who jump on the subscription system it's going to give me a little bit of money trickling through each month rather than waiting a whole year to get paid for a booking next year and then say me traveling back to this area and then that person cancels for whatever reason me having the subscription system means that i'm still getting paid throughout the year guaranteeing me that when i do return to this area i'm going to get paid for the work so i guess you could call my new approach to my income strategy as doing seasonal work so coming back to Southeast Queensland during September, October, April and May and conducting photo shoots then during the best months of the year because normally the busiest time of goodness me Luna, usually the busiest time of year for me is leading up to Christmas but here in Southeast Queensland that's a very hot, humid and wet time of year. We get lots of storms, a lot of families that I'm shooting for have young children and the sun sets later which means during their bath and bedtime we have to conduct the photo shoot to get the beautiful light so I think that conducting sessions during the cooler months of the year makes a lot of sense we don't get snow here and it's never actually that cold not for you miss you've had a sore belly haven't you So I've just popped down the road, grabbed myself a little coffee. I think I'm iron deficient at the moment, so I keep getting really tired in the afternoons and having like a one to two hour nap. I know I'm very privileged. So another strategy I have generating income on the road is obviously YouTube. You guys have heard me say for many years now that my dream job is to do content creation just like this episode for you guys full time but that takes a lot of work and consistency and it will either happen or it won't happen. So looking at my analytics from last month, it seems on average I'm generating about $9 per 1,000 views, which is really good because my channel technically is still pretty small and I'm not getting that many views. Like I'm happy with obviously how it's going at the moment. It is growing, which is a positive, but compared to a lot of other channels, people are generating a full-time income and more from creating content just like I am. So obviously that's my goal. At the moment, photography earns me the most money. So that's why that's always my priority. But eventually if YouTube revenue from AdSense, which is how I actually make the money from YouTube, if that starts to overtake my photography income, then this YouTube gig will be my full-time job, which is my goal. I'll always still do photography, but obviously 
if YouTube is my full-time job. It means I can go absolutely anywhere in the world and bring you guys along and get paid along the way. So that's why it's my goal because I love creating videos. It's a way for me to express myself, connect with other like-minded people across the globe. And you know, if you can make a living traveling and sharing that, for me, that makes a lot of sense and that's why I want to do it. But at the moment, photography makes the most money and that is why I have to prioritize that. And some weeks when I'm really busy, I can't get an episode out for you guys because I have to focus on my business. But I'll always do photography, even if YouTube becomes a full-time job because I think YouTube, it can disappear in an instant. Um, and even if I do make a lot of money one day from YouTube, that could change. And at least having my photography business still going means that I've got like a bit of a backup option or something else to fall back upon. So if you're looking at booking a shoot with me, whether it's a wedding or a family shoot, still inquire because I'm happy to adjust my travel dates around weddings as well. So if you guys have a wedding that you'd like me to photograph, which is, you know, not in April, May, September, or October, still let me know because I could, you know, adjust my travel plan and make sure I'm there for you guys as well. Another rainy day here in Sanford Valley. It's been pretty cloudy and rainy lately. We had a couple of beautiful blue sky days, which was lovely, and I was able to top up my batteries. But apart from that, the last few weeks, I've actually had pretty low power in the caravan and I've had to pull out my Jackery portable solar generator to give me a little bit extra power to charge camera batteries for the shoots I've been conducting and to power my iPad here, which I'm using to do all my business admin instead of using my main computer, which you saw earlier in this episode. My large computer that sits in my office is what I use for photo and video editing. And this one here is just an iPad that has a keyboard attached to it. And this is what I'm using to do all other administration tasks in my business and social media management and that sort of thing. So since returning to the region early March, over March, April and May, I've been working a lot, doing heaps of photo shoots, trying to save up all my money so I can take another trip from May, June, sorry, not May, from June and July. And then I'll be back here to do work again, August, September, October, and then November, I'm planning to also leave on another trip. So as I explained earlier, I'm doing seasonal work, trying to cram all of my work into those um, couple of months when I am back in Southeast Queensland, which means I'm very, very busy. So a couple of other aspects of my income strategy involve reducing my cost of living. So as you guys may know, for the last five years living on a private piece of land, I was working as a caretaker. And by doing this, I was able to reduce my cost of living by not needing to pay rent because instead of paying rent, I was doing mowing, whippersnipping and other caretaking jobs as a form of payment. At the moment, I'm staying on a beautiful farm just down the road from where I normally live. And this is one of the farms that I conduct a lot of my family portraits on. I've become very close with the family here over the last, I think it's also five years, five, six years that I've been visiting this farm. And they've allowed me to stay here for the month of May while I finish off my work and then I'll be hitting the road again. Now, of course, at first I wanted to pay them for staying here, but they've insisted that I don't have to pay, which is so lovely of them. Honestly, they're the most generous people. I can't thank them enough. So in return, to make myself feel better, I've been doing a little bit of gardening for the lady that owns the property. And that's another way I guess some people might be able to reduce their cost of living is by instead of paying money, like if you're living in a van or in a, some alternative lifestyle like I am, um, you might be able to find a place to park and provide some sort of service instead of actually paying money. So that's one way I've been reducing my cost of living. Another way is going through all of my bills each month and having a look at what's necessary and what's unnecessary. For example, when my mum passed away a year and a half ago, my brother and I had to empty her entire house. And obviously I live in a caravan, so I don't really have any room in here to be able to store a lot of my mum's possessions that I wanted to keep. So at the time, I decided to hire a wardrobe sized storage facility. So the storage facility is where I stored a couple of mum's possessions, family photos, and also a few things from the caravan that I've needed like all of my tools that I used to build the caravan, um, other bits and pieces like winter clothing, summer clothing, depending what time of the year it is, just other bits and pieces that I sort of felt like I needed 
that I didn't want to get rid of but then they've sat in there for so long so obviously I don't need them so I've decided to get rid of a lot of stuff so I've donated things to friends and family and my brother is now looking after my mum's possessions instead of me paying $90 a month for a storage room so that's another piece of advice is go through all of your cost of living and just see what's actually necessary what things you could probably reduce so for example getting rid of subscriptions that you haven't been using lately like maybe you're not watching Netflix and you've been spending more time on YouTube that sort of thing then maybe you could cancel your Netflix subscription or another example would be in my business I have a photo gallery subscription where I upload all of my clients images to an online gallery and that's where they download them from so some months I need a lot of online storage to be able to deliver all of my client galleries to my clients but then when I'm traveling I won't really need to be paying you know $30 a month for this online gallery and I can probably cancel it or at least lower the storage amount to a, a smaller amount um, that I'll only need for the months that I'm not actually doing all of those large uploads so that's another suggestion like with different subscriptions you have see if like occasionally they allow you to upgrade or downgrade depending on I guess your activity for that month another thing that I've been trying to do is reduce how often I'm going shopping so normally I've been doing a shop maybe once or twice a week but I've decided to reduce how often I'm shopping and just literally eat everything I have before I go and do a shop so for example before I would go oh, all right you know we're starting to look low on food I might go and do a shop but really I mean I've got pasta in there I've got some pesto tin of tuna I could actually make a pasta that would get me through another couple of days um, and then maybe when I run out of food entirely do the shop and by doing that you're shopping less often and overall saving a little bit of money so I guess when it comes to an income strategy for a nomadic lifestyle a lot of us might go right what kind of jobs can I get out there I've had people make suggestions to me like hey when you're traveling why not get a job in a pub why not get a job on a farm somewhere and yes they're great ideas and for a lot of people that would work out well but for me that's not really something that I want to do and that is because I've got two dogs and two chickens but primarily the dogs like if I was to go out into a rural country town and get a job in the pub obviously I'd be at the pub working and while I'm there what are my dogs doing I'd have to leave them in the caravan which is obviously not ideal um, or pay a pet minder or something like that and then I'm working somewhere and I'm not doing what I want to be doing which is driving around doing photography and creating videos for you guys so something I've done since I was in my early 20s is thought about my current skill set and what I could do with that to generate some money so when I was young, I worked in hospitality and I was pretty miserable working for someone else. Long hours that weren't really fun, felt like prison, didn't really want to go to work but had to keep a roof over my head. Which is actually what inspired me to start my own business doing photography work in the beginning. Because I didn't really like the idea of having a job just to keep a roof over my head. I wanted to live my life doing something that I enjoyed, that I felt passionate about. That had the bonus of earning money which kept the roof over my head. So when I was young, I started to go, right, I'm miserable working in this cafe. I don't want to do this. This can't be what life's about. You know, only spending two days of the week doing the things I actually want to do and the rest of the week I've actually got to go and do something that I don't enjoy and hang out with people that I might not even really like. <laughs> So I started to think about ways I could make my own money. I didn't have many skills at the time, but what I did have was a love for animals. So I started offering a dog walking service to my community. And then that evolved into a pet mining service, which I ended up operating for about eight years with a client base of, I think it was about 60 people that would sort of, you know, fluctuate over time. But, you know, some Christmas seasons I'd turn over $10,000. Like, it ended up being quite a profitable business. However, it wasn't something I wanted to do long term. It was really just a side hustle. So when I first started my photography business, I had no technical skills or training when it came to photography. Just a passion and a keen eye for taking photos of beautiful scenery and, in particular, my dog Edge. And so while I was building my photography business, on the side I had the pet mining business as well, so they were kind of what consumed most of my time and I kind of just went out into the world and 
did those two things and found ways to make money. So at first I honestly had no idea what I was doing and I just let both businesses evolve over time into you know what they eventuated to. So I ended up wrapping up my pet mining service around when COVID hit because obviously no one was going anywhere we weren't allowed to and the pet mining wasn't something that I really wanted to do forever. It was more of a side hustle that supported my photography business for a long time and at that stage when COVID hit my photography business was able to sustain itself and although COVID obviously had its impact it was overall okay and that's why I'm still doing photography so the reason I'm giving you this background story on my career is because I was looking for ways to generate an income for my nomadic lifestyle from now where I am now I'm like going right okay what sort of work could I do could I get a job doing this could I work for this person and I failed to actually do what I've done my whole life which is right think about the skill set you have currently and how could you generate an income from what you already have and I think for a lot of people out there even if you're not trying to generate an income for nomadic living where you can work remotely you might just want to actually have a lifestyle change or a career change and I always say to people you should turn your passion into your career because that way work doesn't feel like work and how you spend most of your waking hours of your life earning an income which is what most of us have to do is spent doing something that you actually enjoy and for me that's such an important thing because I honestly don't see the point in life if you're doing something that you just genuinely don't enjoy. So over the last 12 months I've been thinking about ways that I could earn money while I live this nomadic lifestyle, obviously YouTube and um, working for other companies, doing social media work or maybe getting a whole other job entirely. Meanwhile, I never actually thought, hey, I have a decade of experience operating my photography business. I have a massive client database. Why don't I just look at how I can turn my existing business into a business that will generate me money while I'm traveling? I guess the main message that I wanted to share with you guys in this episode is it's very easy when it comes to making money to do things that you don't necessarily want to do just to keep a roof over your head because obviously we all need money to put food on our table or pay rent and so we can be influenced to do things that we don't really enjoy doing or really want to do just to fulfill those needs. Now of course things take time, you can't just go out there and expect everything to happen overnight. For me at the moment I've only got five clients who have signed up for my subscription system which is definitely not enough <laughs> to sustain me each month when I'm not in southeast Queensland and I'm traveling but I know that as each day goes by each week goes by the more marketing I do and communications that I have with my existing client base or even new clients the more subscribers I'll get and things will grow over time if you guys would like to support my video production you can do so by becoming a patron these are all the people currently supporting me who see behind the scenes exclusive content and my whereabouts before YouTube does. But if you're not in a position to financially support my video production, you can support me just by hitting subscribe below this video here. It costs you absolutely nothing and means a lot to me. If you're interested in my photography service and would like to sign up for my subscription service where in return you'll receive an annual photo shoot valued at $350 for just $29 a month, a link will be below in the description as well where you can contact me directly through my website and we can discuss those details further. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I look forward to seeing you in my next one where I share more about where I've been staying lately. It's so beautiful outside where I am and I'll be getting ready to hit the road and take you on my next adventure. I hope you're all well wherever you are in the world and I'll see you all soon.